Wondery Plus subscribers can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free. Find Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Hi, Sean. <gasps> Who is that? It's Eric McCormick with a mustache. Yes. Yes, I, uh, we're gonna, I think we should do a good 10-minute segment on the mustache alone today. I think, yeah. Uh, let's focus on it. Um, what do we have for our audience today, Shani? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was thinking we could talk through our episode, Alley Cats. Have you seen it? I'm not sure we want to, but we're gonna, and uh, we're also going to talk to one of our writers and one of the writers of this episode, Alex Hirschlag. Who I love. Game on. It's just Jack. It's also Will. Theme song. Welcome back to Just Jack and Will, the program where Sean and I break down an episode of Will and Grace every single week because you asked for it. But before we get started, Shawnee, here we are still on Broadway in the midst of it. You know, from the moment you walk on stage to the moment you bow, it's I, I'm just having a great time. But yes, it's it that sort of like, oh, man, it's Wednesday. You got two shows tomorrow. Yeah. Um, um, but here's a little secret. I kind of don't mind two show days. That's good. Yeah, kind of, you know why? Because I'm at the theater and it's cozy and you have your little tiny corner dressing room and you eat your meals, you take a nap and then you do the second show and your wheels are greased from the first show. Now here's, kind of, that's interesting. Kind of nice. That's very interesting uh, because I am the opposite. I got to go home between shows. Oh, I, I, I don't know if it's a claustrophobia thing or if I just need a fresh start. I need to make every show start. Yeah. But uh, I will. I've always stayed close to uh, to Midtown when I've when I've done Broadway, so that I can walk home. Okay, so let me tell you this though. Yeah, the re the reason I don't go home is because if I go to a show on a two show day on Wednesday yeah. or Saturday, and if I went home between shows, mm -hmm. it feels like a whole other day or something. I can't explain it. I want the time I leave my apartment to go to work, and I want the time when I come home to be done with work. I come that. back and forth feels like work, no work, work, no, like, I don't know, you know? Yeah. And, and there are some people like the people in my cast are a little younger than me and yeah. they are so good. Like, oh, well, we got three hours between shows. Let's go bowling or you know, I'm going to go shopping or I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah. I, know. I must lie in a coma and stare at the ceiling and <laughs> regenerate. Yeah. I know, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But you know what we don't have to regenerate for and how excited we are <laughs> is for Alley Cats this episode. And uh, right now, this is time for Just Facts. These are just the facts. It is, uh, it is episode 121, the second last, the penultimate episode of season yes. one uh, called Alley Cats. Um, yeah. Although written earlier, at least drafts of it were written earlier. We're going to talk to our guest today, Alex Hirschlag, about that. This one was not supposed to come so late uh, in yeah. the batting order, I don't think. Uh, the original air date, May 6th, 1999. Yeah, it was written by Alex Hirschlag and Joni Marchinko, who we talk about on, on, on the show a lot, too. Yeah. Hysterical. They're both hysterical. I can't wait to ask Alex something, which I'm going to save. Cause I, I'm yeah, going to surprise them. you with this question yeah. I have. Um, ratings, 22% of the audience. Yeah, number seven for the week. That's Not good. so bad. I mean, yeah. Yeah, by the end of season one, we were in the freaking top 10. Yeah, out of all shows. Out of all um, shows. In this show, uh, Rob and Ellen admit that they don't enjoy playing games with Will and Grace. It's a really funny episode because of Grace's competitive nature. Meanwhile, Karen saves a workman's life after learning how to administer CPR from Jack. Because <laughs> I mean, there's a story that had to be told. <laughs> um. <laughs> I know. I know it is so crazy, but it was funny, but it was crazy. Um, as Shawnee said, Tom Gallup and Lee Ellen Baker as Rob and Ellen. We loved having them on. Uh, yeah, so a, funny. A lot during the first season and several times. Eventually, Tommy became sort of unavailable to us. He was doing movies and then he moved uh, moved on to other professions. But uh, I know I, I, I hope he can come on and join us at some point. Yeah, I hope so, too. Um, but he is particularly funny in this episode. Yeah, 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 for sure. But the Tom Gallup sort of repeating what his wife says <laughs> yeah. bit is is my favorite part of this episode. It's really funny. And the way he delivered it, too. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, Johnny, you love this part. What happened on this day in 1999? 
May 6th, 1999. Mm. Top of the Billboard Church was Live in La Vida Loca with gay Ricky Martin. Gay, 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 gay. Ricky Martin's gay. With No Scrubs by TLC <laughs> and Kiss Me by Sixpence Down the Rich. I have a little story about Kiss Me. Did I already tell this story? I don't know. Kiss Me by Sixpence Down the Richer. Yes. Uh, just below the third. So I went to a Lakers game with Steve Shenbaum, who was actually in an episode of Will yeah. and Grace. Steve Shenbaum, yeah. remember Steve? And... At the Lakers game, at the LA, he's like, you want to go? I was like, sure. I've never been to a, a, a Lakers game. So we're sitting there, and they have the Jumbotron camera. Yeah, the Kiss Cam. The Kiss Cam. Yeah. And so they play that song, and there was, it, it was like on, I don't know, Denzel Washington and his wife. And then you look up, and you see if you're on camera, you kiss. And then they put the camera on me and Steve in front of the whole stadium. <laughs> and they're like, so kiss me. So I panicked, and you know, Steve is straight. Very yeah. straight, married with kids. And I was like, in my brain, in one and a half seconds, I'm like, do I kiss him to be funny in front of everybody? No, I'm too afraid. I'm, I'll get beat up. I don't know what I was thinking. So I looked at the back of my hand and I made out with the back of my hand. Hilarious. <laughs> so stupid. I uh, but anyway, that's, love that. <laughs> that's my kiss me story. Uh, popular <laughs> movies are still the same. The Matrix, Saving Private Ryan, Prince of Egypt, Patch Adams. And uh, it'll probably stay like that until the... Mummy, I think, in the Phantom Menace. <gasps> Remember the Phantom Menace? I want On that subject, by the way, New York Post uh, had an interesting article from May 6, 1999, about the Phantom Menace. The Star Wars, because I'm a massive, massive, massive Star you Wars. You are, fan. right? Yes, me less. So. And it says from fans who caught invitation only screenings of the highly anticipated Star Wars prequel, the verdict is, is it's good, but don't quit your day job to camp out for tickets. <laughs> Look, Basically, everybody felt the same way, right? Everybody felt the same way, which is, you know, a good way to sum, summarize it is, it is like all Star Wars fans, it didn't like it, can't wait to see it again. You know? Yeah. Did, yeah, did you see those? I, I was like, I saw the original in 77 and then probably the next two, but it was never my thing. And it's very much my wife's thing and uh, so yes. many people I know. So, uh, yeah, so by the time the, the new ones came along, the next three, uh, I was not heavily invested. Yeah, I get it. But, and yet you still started in that awesome movie, um, Free yes. Enterprise, about Star Free Trek. Free Enterprise, very much about Star Trek. And I didn't know anything about Star Trek either. Did I, I know the um, story about auditioning for that? That uh, I, it was just before. Maybe, wait, tell me. It was just before Will and Grace, before the uh, first auditions for that. Um, and doing this movie called Free Enterprise about two Star Trek nerds, just absolute crazy fans. And at my audition, they, these guys sort of knew my work and they wanted me, but they really needed me to show up with something. And I said, guys, I don't know from Star Trek. I don't know from Star Wars. I got nothing. Uh -huh. And they were like, really? Like, you're just not a fanboy in any way? And I went, well, I'm a big Planet of the Apes guy. Oh no! And they said, "What, really?" And I and I started doing oddly enough because there's a reference in this episode. I started doing my Charlton Heston. Ah! From, so uh, I don't know if you were a Planet of the Apes guy, but all five of the original Planet of the Apes movies, big for my adolescence, very big. Can you do a little bit of Charlton? <laughs> yes. Here's Charlton Heston. Everybody you ever knew has been dead for ten thousand years. <laughs> That's my, and, and then the other one, the first ah, <laughs> That is really good. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's what's happening the week this episode aired. When we come back, we're going to talk all things Alley Cat. Stick around. It's just Jack. And Will. So here comes the part. Of the show every week that I always look forward to where yeah. Sean and I recreate one of our scenes. Mm -hmm. We had none. How about that? We had no scenes together. And I mean, there would be many episodes to come where that would be the case. But I feel like this might have been one of the first where we, we have no communication at all. You don't come into the first scene and, you know, right. steal food. Nothing. Yeah. So. That's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it till later. Okay. But right. I really don't remember this episode. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember any of them. But I'm like, I don't remember this at all. I loved it though. It oh, was really good. Funny. Well, okay. Well, we'll we'll debate about that. I, I, I I'm going to be honest with our with our listeners. I didn't love it. I oh, didn't, you didn't. I, I, I agree with you. What you it. said at the top about like me and Karen. I was like, what are we doing? Rescuing? We're see people. Like, what's happening? <laughs> but um, it's like uh, uh, we'll talk about that with Alex. Okay, so. Um, the cold open, we start, 
in Will and Grace's uh, apartment. And um, yes. of course, many times throughout the season one, we're playing charades. Yes, uh, hysterical. Love that. I always loved that that was kind of our little, our little I thing. Do. We're horribly, too. horribly competitive and celebratory and self-congratulatory. No. Really annoying. Really annoying. I, I mean, that was the thing. I, watching these episodes again, I go, sometimes Will and Grace, but particularly together, really, really annoying. Um, I, I, no, I didn't find it at all. <laughs> I love the crying game thing, by the way. The crying game, the crying game gag was funny. That, what a huge thing that was. <laughs> No pun intended. Uh, was at the time the Crying Game, <laughs> such a huge movie. Yeah, that was a big deal. And one of the first times in my life that I remember this concept of spoiler alerts being, you know, crucial. You didn't, uh -huh. you know, it was really you did not tell anybody mm -hmm. how the Crying Game ends. Mm -hmm. uh, and then people would, or people would guess. And, the, and if your boy George, he knows all there is yeah. to know about the Crying Game. <laughs> An awesome, um, <laughs> awesome recording of that by Boy George. Yeah, I love that. Um, and also, sidebar, I don't remember there not being a mirror over your fireplace. Uh, so I when you guys were playing that. the games, yeah. I was like, oh, there's no mirror. Hmm. But there, there will be later, I think. There definitely will. Yeah, soon. I, I know this feeling. I know you love games. I love games. And I, I know it's like, how could you not? How do you not know? You know? <laughs> Obvious stuff. I love that. I know. I do, you know what? I I have a love hate with games because I do love with the right people and the right mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. But yeah, some 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 new people. You go to somebody's house and like, oh, you've never met my friends Biff and Reg, but and it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to expose my game playing side to Biff and Reg. And, uh, right, you know, right. So I, I find it very vulnerable. I think games, so I, so I, I get I get the Robin Ellen of this. I get how. Uh, right, it's very common. Very common. Um, I, I've, I've played games with competitive people where, and then you get competitive and then the thing is over and then you're in the car on the way home. Yeah. And you're like, well, that meant there's no stake. Like we won nothing. Like. <laughs> Why was everybody feeling so competitive? And, you, and then on the way home, you're like kind of embarrassed. You're like, why was that so important? Yeah. It just goes to show you all dinner parties should involve winning money. <laughs> right, exactly. Just so there's stakes. There's exactly. Stakes. Um, Alan's not having fun. We set up the idea that Grace is too competitive, uh, which I, I, I kind of love that theme. I love that idea. It, it's rife with comedy. I know you didn't. I can't wait to hear what you didn't like about this episode. But um, and then it ends with uh, <laughs> Grace saying, yeah, friendly game. Yeah, friendly we kick game. their asses, though. Yeah, you say. And then like the dog they are. And then was that real wine or grape juice that you drank? Oh, I'm remember? sure it was grape juice because it was the first episode, uh, first uh, scene. I think occasionally as the years went by, if there was wine in the last scene, yeah, I, I would turn to uh, to props and go, you might as well make it real. <laughs> really? Yeah, sure. Why not? That's great. I love that. Then we go to Grace's office where the comedy team, the B story is happening completely <sighs> separate from the A story. I mean, yeah, I yeah. didn't understand it. I was like, what am I watching? But it was some of it made me laugh. It was funny. And it, yeah. and it was real true. Honest to goodness. Karen action going on too good. <laughs> good two racist jokes in this first yeah. scene alone uh -huh. one about the italian workman and the other about what is for cuban refugees that she <laughs> brings yes. over for and then honey silk color blue color they don't even mix in the washing machine yeah. <laughs> hysterical uh um, I, yeah i love how unapologetic by by this point the writers I know, were it's amazing. about writing I, her just racist shit <laughs> And, and and it's amazing how brash the char the character is, and you end up loving her mm -hmm. because she's so funny. I mean, it's it's so amazing, brilliant, and looking great in both her outfits yes. in this episode. Uh, Megan Mullally looking pretty hot. I know, and also apparently Jack is in a prayer circle. I know. <laughs> I wrote that down. I'm like, wait, what? A prayer circle? I go to church? I don't understand. Well, uh, and, and it's yeah, then, so random that I want money to buy Birkenstock the slip, slip ons. I know. <laughs> Hilarious. And, and it's sort of a reminder that J Jack was Johnny Come Lately. Anything, if he could meet cute guys or get, get yeah. money or something, he would join any religion and do any job. And, and I love the, uh, totally. Did you see God? Is she mad at me? I love a that. I which that. a little precursor to Cher. Remember when yeah. Cher played God? Yeah. I was talking about that today. Who with what? Oh, on 
Seth Rudetsky's show, which I did today. For those okay. who listen to Seth on um, on Sirius Radio. Uh, he was asking about the guest stars on the show from years past, and I talked about Cher, which mm-hmm. is not this episode. She does not bowl in the Alley Cats episode, but uh, <laughs> I, I was I was remembering, and we'll talk about this in many episodes to come, but just how gorgeous she, when she came for rehearsal that afternoon, yeah. before yeah. she got into makeup, without a stitch yeah. of makeup on, that she was stunning and- Stunning. Young looking. Yeah, incredible. Sounds amazing. Um, I agree. Very funny bits. Uh, Karen spraying a little perfume on herself and then goes over to the <laughs> ass crack of the repairman <laughs> and sprays it. I know. In the Do you crack. think that was Jimmy, Megan, writing? I don't know. It's yeah. funny. Uh, definitely laughed out loud at that one. Yeah. Um, and then I offer, well, I don't know. I can't remember why Jack offers to teach Karen CPR just because. Well, because uh, um, her husband, uh, Stan, had, had had choked on something the other night. Oh, right, on, on right. A, on, on a rack of lamb. Not a piece of lamb. <laughs> oh, right. A rack right. of lamb. Um, <laughs> this is one of the things I, I'm curious to ask Alex about, because, you know, what, they obviously made a decision that there was going to be this A story that was about Will and Grace's competitive problem, and they're going to do it with friends. Okay. Right. And then it becomes, it's, it's not like... They finally said, oh, finally, we can tell that CPR story. Right. You know, it was <laughs> know obviously they know. were like, they were like, well, great. Let's put Jack and Karen together. What are they going to do? And I I'm just know. fascinated that this was, this was oh, what why? came out of it. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. And by the way, Eric, the, the, the elevator by Grace's <laughs> office door, yes. was that sometimes there and sometimes not there? Or was that always there? I think what changed, in fact, I know this, what changed in the reboot was that there was still that thing. I think that was still there, but it was not its own little separate room. Okay. Remember when you come in? on the, in the Oh, room, yes, it was the same room. We were in the same room. Yeah. We are back in, we we're in actually in Will's office for the first time in this episode. Rob and Ellen have gone out of their way to come and tell me how much, <laughs> how much uh, they can't stand playing games with Grace. Right. So By I, the way, Eric, I love the, I love the um, opening line of this scene when they're, they're like, uh-huh. oh, we were just having lunch around the corner and stopped by. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they got them there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so after anyway. a while on sitcoms, you, you, just, you, you just stop explaining it. It's like, right, hey, I right. just ran across town to tell you one thing and then I'm going. <laughs> um, yes, and uh, that's what, this is where I have my, uh, uh, my Charlton Heston reference, which is... yeah. I really had to think, you know, nowadays we can't stop talking about the gun problem in this country. I know. But back know. then, the idea that this actor who people weren't thinking necessarily, are they, you know, they were they Republican or were they Democrat? But Heston was the first one to say, I am a member of the NRA and, you you know, out of my cold, dead hands and all that stuff. And that's the first time I remember it being a real discussion in Hollywood. Yeah. I remember... Um Remember Rosie O'Donnell had Tom Selleck on oh, her talk show right. and sh- and they got into it because he was a big gun ad- yeah. activist. And bo- by the way, you look back then and you're like, well, everybody was onto something because now guns are out of control. Different yeah. podcast, different issue. Different podcast, different issue. Yeah. But the fact that about my joke is you can watch Moses extol the virtues of semi-automatic <laughs> weapons. <laughs> yes. Again, you know, yes. known for being uh, in several big religious films and loving his guns. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, we're on to Will and Grace's apartment where Rob and Ellen are over while um, Grace is, uh, you know, fixing stuff in the kitchen. And, yes. Oh, so, yes. So they realized that that Grace never did hear my messages about, hey, maybe we should cool it down with the games. So she's right. in full on. I bought new games. I'm going to kick your ass mode. Uh, yeah. And uh, Lee Ellen with the with a great delivery. When Grace says, "What do you think of that?" She says, "I think you should return your damn phone calls, Grace." Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching it, going, feeling how Grace. Did a little bit when she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to tell you where I am. And I'm sure going to try to make you guess it. And she was like, small world, little word. The <laughs> only word they didn't say was the word the. Uh, and and no. I'm sitting there watching this episode going, it's fucking the. <laughs> 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 like getting angry at them like Grace would. Anyway. I loved that little bit. I really did. Uh, yeah, I too. loved their pain. Very real. And it, it, it actually resulted in one of my, one of the more memorable lines, certainly from this episode, but also I remember it from... Just from shooting the episode in season one was yes. just her going, here's your words, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yes, yeah, very funny. I have your, one of my favorite lines is yours in this episode, which is, um, 
Today I found a couple of words that are worth a ton, and they're about Scrabble because yeah, you're right. about to play Scrabble, and uh, that are worth a ton. And they're each only four letters. <laughs> you say, "I'm." You say what? I think Robin Ellen is thinking of a couple of choice four letter words of their own right now. <laughs> I thought that was a great yeah. line. Yeah, uh, uh, and then eventually they uh, explain themselves to Grace. It's nothing personal. We just think you're too competitive and blah 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 and aggressive. And I love how the yes. the scene ends. Super smart jokes. Uh, Grace storms off to, you know what? I'm not gonna then I'm gonna go to my room and play with myself by myself. I meant by myself. <laughs> yeah. And then I wrote in my notes, that's what we call a good blow. Blow. Uh, yes. That's how you blow a scene. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have got to get back to the CPR story, Sean. I, because everybody's dying, literally. It's like enough of the games. Uh -huh. is, is, the, is the CPR dummy going to be okay? So, Recessit Annie. Recessit? Recessit Annie? Annie? Yeah, Recessa yeah. Annie. And um, then I have that long acronym. I'm like, well, you know the acronym. The acronym and then I'm like, joke is funny. Uh, that made Dumbass me. me, who could never remember lines, memorized this crazy acronym. I'm like, what? I Where did that come from? <laughs> I was like, that I was, was crazy. The same thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So then we pretend we figure out how to practice CPR. It was just crazy. Yeah. And um, and then the and then the beginning of is it the first time we did this? Maybe I don't know. The, the scene ends with us saying, "I say every human has life. Life. every human life every human has life has value." value. <laughs> we pause. And then we laugh like every human and life doesn't have value. What was really funny for me watching it this time is I, I had forgotten that that was the blow, is you guys laughing. And for the, as those words are coming out of your mouth, every human life has value. And, and your, the look on your face seems so sincere. And I was like, that's weird. I, I, they, they wrote <laughs> Jack weird in this. And then all of a sudden, you both scream with laughter. And I thought, there you go. That's there it, it is. Yeah. And that was the beginning of a kind that's of a Jack runner for the whole series, right? That, yeah. that we did that a lot, I think. Uh, now, do you remember in the previous scene when uh, we talked about bowling? Yeah. <laughs> do you? Because we didn't. That yes. is what is wrong with this I episode. Know. I know. Why didn't they just go back and do a pickup All of a sudden, we're in a bowling alley. No, the was... last thing we heard, were, there were not going to be any games, and Grace was going to go and sulk by herself in her room, and suddenly, without any explanation... <laughs> yeah. But we you know what, though, bowling. watch watching it for the first time, I'm watching it going, it, I mean, you saying that now, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's such a good point. But watching it, I didn't think about that. Honestly, I was like, oh, now I could see where the story is going. They, you're trying not to be competitive and, 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 and thematically, okay, so now we're at another type of game. Yeah, I mean, thing. all it requires, you know, the, the thing we'd set up is that Rob and Ellen are not good at games. And so mm -hmm. they lose, and we love that, and they hate that, and it's and, yep. and we rub yep. it in. But it, it just needed something, you know, as, the, as, as Jimmy pans the camera over to discover. And it was a great set. The bowling lanes, were, that was great. But yeah. just something that, you know, Rob or Ellen says, now this is a game we're good at. Or thanks for doing this, guys. It's just, you know, we don't, we're, or, or, or Grace, yeah. why are we here again? And I just say, look, it was their idea. Let's play on their terms. Something. something to like to, to anchor the scene yeah it is like Wait, bizarre the, so let me ask you I three i have questions for you uh -huh. because i wasn't in the scene and i don't remember it and i don't know how did they shoot this how is the set designed where the balls real they weren't <laughs> i think they i don't the think balls the balls were real. not real so, so they were what plastic yeah they were they were plastic as i recall and that's funny you know, the only time you saw bowls, bowls, balls bowling and rolling and hitting pins was a, a separate cutaway shot. They obviously where do they did. shoot that though? Though where do they get the? They must have sent like a cherry once Kelly. we shot. They, they went and they yeah they went to uh, what's the place there on Ventura that was near the, the Jerry's uh, Deli, the bowling right, alley. Exactly that place. Is that where they uh, shot it? Probably went there and got that. Yeah, but yeah. um, and I, I do like my little river dance that I do when I throw. A I love laughed out loud. <laughs> so fucking funny. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and it looked real almost. Um, but then, you know, so then we get out that they, that we, we clearly see that Grace is kind of doing the thing where she's losing on purpose, blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. And, and that right? was kind of like, is she losing because she's not 
good at this, but she's just trying to be okay with it? Or is this a master plan all along? I wasn't right. sure. wasn't sure. But yeah. she, uh, she, but I think the master plan part of it is that she wants me to get upset. She wants right. me to uh, admit that I am just as uh, much of an asshole. It was, right. not <laughs> it was not clear. I, I just went with it. I just thought, oh, okay, Grace is being nice and letting them win because she's trying to show them that she can be non-competitive and kind and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I was, I was, it was a little wild. And then back at Grace's office, like you said, can't wait to see how the CPR thing's resolved. <laughs> um, but, it, but it kind of didn't matter because, like you said, it was funny. It's like silly fun, but I didn't know what it was tied to. But um, Interesting how uh, uh, Jimmy shot that, or maybe they, the writers wrote it this way on purpose, but we don't see yeah. Bernie collapse. We don't see anything, any part of it. We just have Karen by herself, by the elevator, we right. hear a kind of a grunt. We hear a stumble. Everything is her by herself until the very end of the scene. She runs in and he's on the ground. That's interesting. Yeah. I wondered if it was like, it's, you know, being a sitcom. Too, to, we didn't want to show graphic. something. Yeah, maybe. Too upsetting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, too upsetting. And also, also we learned later, because I thought Jack was going to come in and perform it for her or yeah. help her. But no, Karen did it all on her own. We learned that. But... Uh, you know, then I come in and I say, oh my God, you know, all these people are downstairs because she's hitting on, the, <laughs> she's hitting on the cute EMS worker. Um, yes. So I guess it was a big kind of uh, model at the time. Lucky Venus. Oh my God. That's right. Yeah. I forgot that. He was a big model. He was outrageously uh, handsome. Yeah, he was. And, and, and Eric, remind me, cause it's the, it's the first time we mentioned Karen's mother-in-law. Who's Karen's mother-in-law? That I just forgot that it was it was Stan's mother, but you know, that really old woman that uh, at the at the gay club that, that only realize that realizes that she's in a gay club and that we're gay and uh, and well, we'll have to discuss when we get there because I don't remember that at all. I know. Um, and then Karen leaves, and of course I throw myself like I do in so many episodes to any cute guy that's on the show. I then remember, cut back. <laughs> I that? remember it was around this time, maybe it was the next season where Jimmy and I is the. Straight guys were standing there, and uh, and he said, you know, honey, the problem with uh, all four characters wanting to sleep with men, we never have any cute women on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's we true. always had handsome freaking men. Yeah, which was fine by me. Yeah. Then we go uh, to the bowling alley to wrap this Back story up. Back to the up. bowling alley, which is... Um, has for one of the my, my most memorable scenes I think from from season one is that the slow motion when after after so, Deborah and I have our big scene and we go back it. for revenge it is really funny the chariots of fire it's bit. so funny dead died by the way I just in the scene I you have you have another line they kind of just went by but I laughed out loud I thought it was really hysterical you say you don't have to you don't have to lose to have fun Grace we're not France yes. <laughs> I thought that was super smart. That's super smart. Um, uh, that sounds and, like an and, Alex Hirschlag joke right there. Um, and then, um, you know, when you, Grace switches over and she admits, she's like, fine, let's be competitive. Let's go kick their asses. Because yeah. now you are yeah. feeling competitive, which I think is a fun turn. Um, but at the end, you know, she, she exits the scene to go talk to you in the corner when you guys argue, saying, "Where you say, where are you going? She, I'm gonna, she says, I'm going to go get ice cream. Yeah. Of course, to me, today, now, at this age, being the fat ass I am, <laughs> I clocked that, and she never came back with the ice cream. She did And no one mentioned missing it, and it was the one thing I would miss. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I love ice cream more than <laughs> most things. More than me, um, but um, not but more really, than you, but most things. And but I really love, funny. Uh, this was a great payoff to that bit we were talking about before with uh, Tom Gallup, where you know whatever Ellen would say, he would say it again, but he'd say it to me, and always finish the line with Will. And this, my favorite, was when she goes, "Ah, I got a winner's thirst," and he goes, "She's got a winner's thirst, Will." And <laughs> it, uh, Tom was funny as hell. He was really, really funny. Um, and then, and like you said, I love the way it ended. It was really, 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 really funny with the slow mo. Yeah. And you can, you can, you can read um, Deborah's lips going, "You suck." Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, um, guys, when we come back, we'll have one of the writers of the episode, Alex Hirschlag, will be our guest. Stick around for more. Just Jack and Will. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to Just Jack and Will. Um, and we are so excited to be welcoming a lot of our OGs, a lot of the original yeah. writers that were there from the beginning, helped to create uh, the feel and the look and the humor of this show. And uh, we have one of them with us today. Mr. Alex Hirschlag is here. Oh, there he is. is. That him? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> no, sadly, I love it. Sadly, the audience can't see you, and I say sadly because you are looking awfully handsome, my friend. Yeah, why do you look so you good? You look great. Well, I think it's not working. Um, <laughs> striking, striking, really striking, really suits striking you. helps my tan. And uh, <laughs> I said, unfortunately, yes, because I like being funny with you. But really, I am super excited to see you. And and we've been talking about you on this podcast for a long time. So I'm so happy you're here today. We haven't seen each other in a long time. And thank you. Thank you for making it my favorite episode of Will and Grace of all time. The one that <laughs> like changed television, because that's that's <laughs> that's well, what we were talking about. Well, yeah. Eric's really excited to get into it with you. because It's very uh, funny. We've had we've had uh, John Canale. We've had Tracy Pass. And we always seem to get them on an episode that they didn't love. I, I, I'm dying to hear your feelings about Alley Cats because this is not my favorite. And there's uh, there's questions I have. <clears throat> um, now, first of all, you so you. Uh, for the, so the audience knows you were there for from the beginning. You 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 came aboard. Well, no, 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 no. I started no? Um, the first season, but uh, I think myself and Jeff Greenstein came a little bit later. Like I think it was maybe the big vent I started on. Right. Um, I I think there were um, writers Davis Savell and William e. William Walker. I think Jeff Greenstein and I replaced them. That's okay. right. So you came in. You came in halfway through the first season and. Um, and how was that room to when you when you arrived? Did you know some of the people in there, or were you kind of? I knew. They I knew Joni. I, I'd worked with Joni before. Right. Max and Dave, I knew a tiny bit, and I think that's it. I think that's the only people I knew. And then you working with Joni? Did you? How did you split up the? What was the genesis of this story? And like, how did it come to be? Because we were talking before you just came on. We were talking about how random it was that Jack and Karen's story was t learning CPR. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea. Also, I think it was very brave of us to have a bowling scene that was not set up at all. I, that's what I was just <laughs> talking about. Said, he just all. said that. I literally said, how, how is it that we come back from commercial and Grace is so not playing games with anyone anymore. She's just going to jerk off in her bedroom. And all of a sudden we're playing, we're bowling <laughs> together. Well, well yeah. I did see that's editing because Max is a yeah. gift gave us like bound scripts of all the uh, yes, episodes. Yes, yes. So I, I read it today, and there was actually a scene that was cut out. Ah, um, oh, wow. The, be the beginning of the bowling scene was actually... Um, Something uh, that Will described why they were there, I hope. Yes, Will and Grace talking, and, and, and Will saying, that's really big of you, Grace, to call and apologize to them. And uh, yeah. It, it that's actually what I was saying, yeah. It actually helps the setup. <laughs> yeah. Or it's a setup. <laughs> and it got cut out. Guy. Yeah. That's, uh, isn't that amazing? And, but it's also because this is a sitcom. It's, it's finding itself as it's moving along. That um, there's a joke you have that you did CPR when you told your dad that you were gay. Yes. Because the, the next season, I, I, I wrote the, um, you know, the one where you come out to your mom. So right. Like, what, it's you like, told your dad, but you didn't tell your mom. You know, so I think it's just one of those things that, yeah. You know, you just drop it like, okay, that didn't happen. Or, you know, right. you, you don't have to keep to, to everything. Everything. Perfectly. Like right, the children right. that Will and Grace had in, in the first <laughs> series and then we threw away in, <laughs> in the reboot. But I'm telling you. But and Jim Colucci probably keeps track of all of that stuff. He does. Like, so, uh, he does, yeah. But, you know, I'm telling you, Alex, like, I know, Eric, what you mean, and Alex, what you mean about setting up the reason why they're at the, at the bowling alley. Yes, it makes complete sense that that should have been kept in there. But watching it, it didn't, I didn't, my brain didn't need to do that math. I was like, oh, they're just going on to another game and it's fine, you know? Like, I think it goes to that thing, and I'm, I'm fascinated by this, particularly with regards to a writer's room and a really smart writer's room, because television for decades would make the mistake of going, ah, the audience is dumb. They won't care. They won't mm -hmm. notice. And a, a room like ours, I think, didn't do that. Like, I feel like you guys must have, there's, between 12 of you, somebody's going to go, we can't do that because we just said that. And if we do that, then again, <laughs> I mean, did right. you find, did you find that that was a room where, because I know you guys were, were all very vocal, 
would you stand up for for the logic of something like that and go we we have to not insult the audience yes so i mean we we all stood up for different things that we thought were important and some things i thought were important at the time that i said why was i so mad about this or so yeah arguing about this and i was you know, I got caught up a lot, especially beginning as a writer and even early on Will and Grace of things having to make sense and having this, 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 and this. Yeah, I was but appreciate it, but in a way, that. But, but it's also a way of like, sometimes like when a kid tells a story, like when a little kid tells us what happened in the movie and they tell every little detail of it, that you kind of realize afterwards when you're editing and you have to fit into 21 minutes or, or however long it was that there are, are leaps that the audience can make um, and we also thought as a writer's room, or at least I, I did, that sometimes you put in more of the exposition, you put in more of the subtext mm -hmm. in an earlier draft so that the everybody sort of knows what they're playing. And then right. when it comes out, you still get the actor's intent, even though it's not there. You know what they're uh, they're expressing. Yeah, they're yeah so they have say. the information. Yeah, for sure. Um, tell me what, since you were there, if you remember... Because it was funny, the CPR stuff. It was random and it wasn't tied to anything, but that's okay. And was was that, what kind of conversation was that like? Because um, was that the first time you're like, it's okay that they go off and do these kind of silly, non sequitur story ideas? This one has the 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 me the markings of oh my god, it's towards the end of the year. We have another episode to write. We don't have much time to to get this done. Let's just get one out there, and yeah. you know we. Um, but but I was surprised watching it. I hadn't seen it in a while. And also just what bad friends you guys are to Robin Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to Sean. I said, we're assholes. We really are assholes. Uh, a lot of the time. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. And so much so that they were kind of scared to tell them that they're too competitive. Whereas like <laughs> yeah. great friends would be like, hey guys, I have an issue with this. Like, you know, they were like, uh, it was really, that's really funny. There was also another scene that was cut that, um, I think would have helped too, which is you and, but it was one of those things that were showing up in a lot of different episodes. Uh, it was before you see Robin Ellen. Yeah. Jack comes to your office and you're saying, do you ever get attracted to like a really scuzzy guy? Like a, like, like a dirty little guy. Like he's uh, like the guy like, who sells shishlock or yeah, something. The, you the know, vendor. The, the right. vendor and he says oh my god i can't believe you're saying that because i i do too i know you did you know and then you you have a gotcha moment that you weren't attracted to the scuzzy guy but sean was uh -huh. and you got him to admit it and then sean uh says that you were into uh if you're gonna drop facts about each other that, that you were into shaggy from scooby-doo <laughs> <laughs> i vaguely remember that <laughs> i don't remember that that's hysterical <laughs> has has anyone talked to any of the writers about the process how we did the rewrites no i'd love that, to i mean we, i'd love yeah, to hear love your, to your take on that because i yeah. i you know i i think that's something the audience doesn't ever really understand they, if, they, if they ever saw a taping they would see the writers working hard in the moment but the what the work you guys do all day long in the room fighting back and forth throwing right. jokes back and forth tell us right. about that well here's a thing that was a little unique for for will and grace uh but and I loved it. And I brought it to other places. We would divide into two rooms, mm -hmm. uh, and one room would do one act, and one room would do the other act, or one room would do one story, and one right. room would do the other story. And we would act out. We each had a part. That I we love play. that. Mm -hmm. Like I was, uh, oddly enough, like Tracy was in one room. I was another. I was Karen. I did the voice <laughs> of Karen, and, and my Karen pretty much was was like Burgess Meredith from from Batman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, honey, you know. So that's how I would read. That's hysterical. And, and Adam Barr would do Will, and John Canelli would do you. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, would do Jack. Uh, uh, I think Joni would do Grace. You know, it would just mm -hmm. be like the different people would would play different people. So, but what was great about writing that way when we would rewrite it, yeah. we, you know, we, then we'd read it over in a room, and then we'd come together with with all of us and just read it and act it out is. We could actually we had the rhythm at least, even yeah. if it wasn't the um, you know the performance you guys would have. We would say, does this joke work rhythmically, or do these lines work rhythmically? Yeah. Or does yeah. it make sense here and there? So, so because um, what blew my mind too is I was learning there because of you and all the writers was when you just said we'd split up. I'm like, 
I don't understand. You split up. I don't, I don't, I can't comprehend that. What do you mean you split up into different rooms? You have to write one story. Why aren't you guys all together? So what I learned was that the outline process, the breaking the story and then writing the outline. So once that, which is the heavy lifting part mm -hmm. is done, then every, it's like a blueprint. Then everybody can go off and build you know, that story because you have all of the foundation already done. That blew my mind as I was learning at 27, 28, 29 years old. I didn't know that. And the same with the rewrite would be that before we broke up into our two groups, yeah. we would be together in one group. Max and Dave would be leading it. Um, and then we would write it, you know, we would divide it and write it. And it was really funny when sometimes accidentally we would come up with like a similar joke in the first act and the second act and say like, oh, it's like a callback. You know, we have a callback without realizing we had a... Mm. We yeah. had a callback because we, yeah. we were, you know, especially as the show moved along. I mean, the first season was still the first season of just getting to know each other. And there yeah. were some writers who were embryonic. gone. And, and, uh, but we really learned, uh, especially coming into season two, of developing that kind of camaraderie and that kind of like working together. And it was fun. Like just for somebody who just, just did a tiny bit of acting, it was just like getting your acting kind of chops a little bit. Yeah, of, of, I love that. Was there something that you kind of already touched on this about the breaking up in the room, but is there something else that's kind of major uh, in your life as a writer now that you took away from that experience at Will and Grace that you now implement moving forward? Like, is there, I don't know what, a, a, a way that you break a story or a way that you do something that you learned on the show on Will and Grace? Like uh, the honesty of like, especially as we go on through the years and stuff and, uh, you know, and, and deal with some, some of the, the episodes that are, you know, whether it was the lows in the mid eighties or Jack coming out or, mm -hmm. you know, even some of the recent episodes, which I liked a lot that dealt with more, uh, with different things. That more you serious could have. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so with more serious stuff that you could have that and then have the, sometimes you want the five jokes per page or six jokes per page. And sometimes learning that if you are having a serious thing, then the one joke would really be a funny Ooh, joke. You know? Right. Even the levity like a, of the of the moment, yeah, a, a carrot cake joke in the, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. It's just like after all the serious stuff, it was just be like, okay, like it, it like would really break things off. So I think well, I, you know, it's, I picked was, that up. I love that, and and you know, what was so impressive before we let you go. Um, what was so impressive as what I remember from being so young and impressionable passing you on the on the stage when we would do run through i was like this guy's kind of unbelievably brilliant because you would just you would mumble just one joke out of nowhere i'm like and that. it was it made me die laughing and i'd be like how <laughs> gifted do you have to be well, alex to have your brain where you just like in a moment just be like what if he said this blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> and you're like how do you teach that like how do you know how to do that it was just it was really well, impressive i'll never forget it well thank you and it was i think like improv as well like having yeah. that background but i i was thinking today remembering that i had so little confidence then i was so shy like i don't think i could look at first when i was pitching you guys i, I couldn't look you in the eye like I no that was a, that was a request that was a request <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was yeah. that's right yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're the sean's contract thing. from the beginning was pretty yeah, tough that was pretty no you I, I i just took it as you read the paper yeah <laughs> well you know seeing see you alex again seeing uh tracy and john and adam uh, i'm reminded that first of all writing 22 episodes a year is is insane and, and it was yeah. the the way we did it but you were there for seven seasons. You ran the seventh season. Yeah. And, and, and I think the audience needs to understand the importance of having the same writers whenever possible. Oh, wow. That there is a yeah. continuity of that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, it, it, you guys became caretakers of, we care, yeah. we care for our characters, but it's, it starts with you. And y if you weren't taking care of those four characters and making sure that they were true to themselves week after week after week and that you had you were creating storylines that that could all stand together and not suddenly seem uh -huh. ridiculous you guys always took care of of us and uh and to the point where you actually ran the show in season seven so i have tremendous memories of uh of putting my faith in you yeah well, thank you that's that's really kind of you to say and i, and I would Likewise. say that we loved the characters we loved the you know and Except loved for Jack. Four of you. you didn't like Jack. You didn't, <laughs> no, you no, we, Jack. we didn't like him. We loved him. Um, <laughs> we loved all of you. And uh, at some point, if I'm ever back, yeah, I want to talk about, I also had a lot of love for like the 
not the big star characters, yeah. but and and not even um, Rosario, who I love too, but the driver and Smitty yes. and and, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yes. and and like there's so many like people that became part of the world as it went yeah. on that yeah. I just I, I especially like the old crazy people. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> and guess what? We're all old and crazy now. <laughs> that's who we're, yeah, that's who <laughs> us now. Um, Alex, buddy, thank you so much for being here today, and we'd love to have you back on. Yes, I'd love no, to absolutely. have you talk about all those. And maybe an episode that's you know not as controversial as Alec has. <laughs> 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 no, we love it. Uh, okay. Thanks, pal. We love you so much. Okay, bye. Thanks, man. That was so fun talking to Alex. I love, I love him. I love having our writers on because that's that's where it all starts. That's where we were I know. born week after Do you week remember week how, week. how, I, I already said it to his face, but remember how fast he was? How quick with yeah. he was? And, so and, and as funny. you said, there was always a kind of sort of quiet, he always had a smile on his face when, he, when yeah. you could see that he was thinking thinking of something and uh -huh. then he'd, he'd sort of say it maybe he'd, he wouldn't wouldn't announce it he'd just kind of yeah. mutter it and it was he, uh always clever and always on the nose love him hopefully he's back this is the part we love to do every week um listeners writing in calling in see what they're curious about tell us about yes. this week's listener question yes this one is from i practiced his pronunciation so hopefully i'm getting it right this one is from Predrig Azekovic, nice. who is not only a fan of the show, but a noted Serbian LGBTQ human rights activist, a writer, director, producer, and the editor-in-chief of Serbia's only gay magazine, Optimist. Wow. So before I read his question, I'd just like to say what an honor it is that he's, A, even listening to this podcast, B, that he called in with a question. This is so cool for us. So uh, very, very exciting. So Predrig writes, if I remember correctly, Will & Grace premiered in the fall of 2000 in Serbia. Right. We premiered in 1998 in the United States on a local Belgrade TV station called Studio B. And they had a billboard campaign all over Belgrade announcing the show with a slogan, men and women can be just friends. Having a gay TV show on Serbian television in 2000 was a huge deal because the situation was very homophobic. At the inaugural Belgrade Pride in 2001, there was violence from right-wing extremists that shut down the Pride Festival for the next nine years. Wow. Many people watched Will and & Grace, and it changed a lot of minds. Did you ever comprehend that activism aspect of the show and your contribution to LGBTQ rights, especially outside the USA? Thank you. Uh, this is fascinating because is fascinating. Uh, you know, we've been asked a lot, were we aware that we were changing minds um, with the show. And I generally say that wasn't where we were focused on. Right. But I definitely was not thinking in any way about the rest of the world. A uh, we thousand were so, percent I wasn't you know? at all. I just assumed it was the United States. I, mean, I didn't all, think it was all, in we Canada. Were so, we were just so hung up on, even Canada, I think, was was a, a slightly delayed release, uh, unless you had an, an, an NBC affiliate um, through, you know, Buffalo or something. But um, we were just so focused on the ratings in, yeah. in in the states because that's what was going to keep us in the air or not. Mm -hmm. That that later to find, I remember we got an invitation that I don't think any of us took advantage of, and I really regret it. That the, the show went really big in Australia the second mm -hmm. year, and we were invited there. The four of us were invited there, and I think we were all busy doing other things. And, and I just I regret not going and seeing the effect the show was having elsewhere. But Serbia, yeah, no, but Serbia. Amazing. I mean, my God, this, these kinds of things would be so much more known to us these days because of the, the internet yeah. and uh, and our phones. Right. And everything else. But back then, the idea that some uh, part of NBC had sold the show to someone else and they'd sold the show to Serbia. Sure, it just right. never got back to us. So it's amazing to think that y you could show up in Serbia next week, Sean, and yeah. Be and get a response from people that would blow your mind. Yes, no, it's it's an incredible. Uh, we always say as a byproduct of, of our show that was not the intent was always funny, funny, funny first, uh, but to have this kind of impact. No, no, to answer your question. Yeah, that one it, really. Uh, when I meet someone from another country that that says how big it was in their homeland, uh, I, I get emotional because I it's yeah, just I do it's too. It's just um, a, a, a byproduct that. We were too myopic to even consider. Yeah, it's really, really, really cool. Yeah. Um, guys, if you want to send a question in, email us at justjackandwill at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 818-308-4012, 818-308-4012. Uh, next week's episode 
is the big yes. season one finale. It's Woo! called Ob- Object of My Rejection. Please watch it. Uh, yes. And, uh, and you'll enjoy the podcast even more. We did yes. something already kind of special for this one. We recorded it live at the Tribeca Film Festival as part of their yeah. audio storytelling series. And it blew our mind. It sold out so quickly. So thank you, guys. Like, I had no idea the Tribeca Film Festival would sell out. Yeah, it but was uh, it was pretty exciting. It was a rainy night, but the line was at the door. And along with 479 of our fans, we were also joined by the fabulous Deborah Messing. Yay! Uh, who'll come back uh, for the end of season one here. So Yeah, yeah. And just let me just quickly interject. Uh, 479 of our fans, you said, would it have killed them to just add one more seat? No. I, 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 you, you hate the odd numbers. <laughs> You're very upset. <laughs> OCD. OCD. Um, we'll see you next time. And until then, I'm just, I'm just going to go to my room and play with myself. What? By myself. Oh. I mean, I meant by myself. Yes. No, I didn't. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Just Jack and Will is produced by Smartless Media. Produced, engineered, and edited by Devin Tory Bryant. That's me. Our talent producer is Ann Harris. Our associate producer is Maddie McCann. Invaluable assistance by Michelle Laparo and Nick Dote. Music by Scott Eisnogel, Lior Rosner, and Raina Larson. Although the Just Jack and Will sting is my fault. Executive producers are Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. Executive producers for Smartless Media are Richard Corson and Bernie Kaminsky. Meet you back here next week for more Just Jack and Will. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen early and ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.